While many think that steam engines are a long gone item, they are still around. They may not be as numerous as they once were, but you can still get a look at the technology that helped shape the nation. And there is a new group of people, young people, who are keeping this technology in the present. There was a time when this nation was young that steam locomotives were the workhorses that transported the bulk of goods and people from one place to another. Today, there is but a small group of remaining steam locomotives that have become living, breathing museums of that bygone era. The preservation of steam technology has been headed up by a small group of individuals who acquired their knowledge of steam engines during the 1960s and 70s. But as these preservationists begin to age, one wonders who is learning from them. Who are the young guns that will keep alive the legacy of steam for future generations? Still in his early 30s, Wolf Fengler is a part-time train aficionado who has brought his engineering expertise to the world of steam restoration. It's a way of connecting the past experiences of people, uh, whether it was a, an immigrant family coming across and settling in a new world, or, um, <clears throat> you know, Grandpa who used to work on the railroad. Um, this was a very vital part of America for a long, long time, the passenger trains and the freight trains and it's a way of bringing that together to, to modern generations. You can see it in a static in a park or in a picture, but until you're up close and hearing the sounds and smelling it and seeing the steam come out, it, it doesn't quite sink in right. And that's part of the reason uh, for the restoration, because we want future gener generations to understand that. Matt Casper is a member of a crew that restored and is maintaining a 1927 Santa Fe locomotive. We work every Saturday. And there's a, there's a core group in the organization, the mechanical group, the mechanical guys that, that uh, spend every Saturday you know, turning bolts and lapping valves and just, just taking care of the little things on the, on the locomotive. It, it's all taught by, by, the old, by what we call the old heads. They've been around forever and unfortunately we're losing a lot of them every month because they're all, they're all World War II vets. And, I try to learn, I try to become just a sponge when I'm around and just soak up as much of the little tricks of the trade that, that they can hand down as, it, you know, that, that the information they have is priceless. When I step behind the controls, you, you really have a sense of power that the engine has and it, it is yours to, to encourage or to restrain. I mean, and, and there's nothing like it. I mean, it, this, this engine is so powerful that you, it, it just, it's humbling to be behind the, the controls of this engine. It's amazing. <laughs> it's every little boy's dream. Learning about steam technology is a daunting challenge. There are no schools in which to enroll, except for the School of Hard Work. Still in his early 20s, Kelly Lynch is currently such a student at the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society. I started coming out here probably around uh, the age of 12 to do actual work. And uh, after working on the Ohio Central, I came back and I said I really wanted to do something that made a difference. Whenever I see someone doing something, I'll chase them down and ask them, you know, why are we doing it this way? Uh, how do you do this? If I see someone going out, and if the crew's going out on the road with the locomotive, I'll be like, hey, do you guys need an extra fireman? Are you going to be all right today? And I'll make it known that I want to go out and learn, and, and they've been really supportive, and that's just basically how it's done. I will, I will ask people, look, what's the job that I can do? What's the thing that nobody else wants to do? And, and I'll do it. I think steam technology, especially like the locomotive, it represents uh, a time and a place when, when uh, there wasn't a push-button society. Uh, there's a lot of discipline, there's a lot of care, there's a lot of uh, maintenance involved, and a lot of people aren't used to that today. I mean, we have computers, you know, and, and stuff like that. So the locomotive itself, I mean, steam technology is so alive. Uh, it it's sounds and it smells and it, and it looks really cool. So it's, I mean, it's, it's a time machine, basically, and it's something worth sharing with people that don't know about it. Though only in his mid-30s, Paul Deleska already has over 15 years of steam experience. There's a lot of people who enjoy the thrill of seeing a steam locomotive operate. Um, comparing steam to a diesel locomotive, a uh, steam locomotive is very exposed as to how it works. The pistons, the cylinders, uh, all the moving parts on the outside. And I, I really do think that steam in general is kind of an addiction. Once you get exposed to it and you become interested, um, it's hard to get out of your system. Uh, you really, you know, 
you're driven by some strange force to stay involved and keep doing stuff with it. The engine that I started working on was the Northern Pacific 328. Uh, it's a 10 wheeler that uh, MTM was running in the 80s and 90s. Uh, it's a very trim uh, Rogers built 10 wheeler uh, plate say alpha, but really is a Rogers engine. Uh, I spent about a year working on 261, and then I have kind of a long-term relationship with the White Pass and Yukon 69 between uh, working on it in Nebraska and then again in All right. Wisconsin. All right. And of course the 464 and the 10-wheeler the here at the Huckleberry. Michael Manwiller was born to railroading and has already assembled an impressive steam resume. Primarily it's fourth generation in the family. Um, steam locomotive is unlike any other piece of machinery that's out there that I can really think of or anybody that's ever been really around machinery I think would agree. Just all the different nuances that go along with the machine, uh, the personalities of the equipment. And plus it's like a it's like a living, breathing way to the past of what once was. It's a reminder of the way things used to be. John Rimash is another young gun who has been working on steam locomotives since his early teens. I became interested in trains like so many others in society do. It was a first childhood memory of mine. I remember watching the train go around the Christmas tree and this particular train wasn't just any train, it was a steam locomotive. And even to this day I have that steam locomotive in, in my collection and uh, that locomotive brings back a lot of very fond memories, particularly that Christmas. But as I grow and as I've gotten older I remember that steam locomotive and it really instilled in me a love for steam locomotives. Uh, for big trains. Uh, it gave me a passion. I feel it's important to preserve steam technology, not necessarily for the technology, but for the history of it. Um, we are quickly losing in our society the group of people that remember, that directly remember riding behind a steam locomotive when they were children. And uh, if we don't preserve this history, we're going to lose it completely. And we won't be able to say to my children or, or to my young boys, this is what a steam locomotive is. We'll only be able to say to them, this is what a steam locomotive was. What's our favorite it's comforting to know that the steam technology that literally built this country is being preserved by yet another generation of dedicated rail buffs in order that future generations might experience it in action. <laughs>